Okay, so even before we go into our online teaching, I'm going to describe um, our school a bit. Um, so as uh, Chris said, we're a K to two school. Um, we have about a little over 300 students. We have 100 kindergarten students at our school. Um, it's an immersion school. It's very child-centered. Uh, we do the deep learning, the six C's. So for one month, the whole school works on one C and um, we teach them all the same C at the same time. So at the beginning of the year, we normally work on collaboration. So we'll do a lot of projects. We'll talk about what is collaboration. The whole school is working on the same thing. Uh, we encourage students whenever they're doing it. So it's wonderful. Um, we also, um, we are a UDL school as well. Uh, children always have a choice on how they want to work. Uh, if they want to work sitting down, uh, standing up, uh, lying on the floors, they have different ways to sit as well, different stools to sit on. It's wonderful. Um, in class, when children um, are tired, they can ask for a body break. This year we can't do it because of uh, COVID. But when they ask for a body break, we have Le Club Energie that is in the hallway. So downstairs for the kindergarten, we have about six stations set up and we teach the children. They leave with the timer for five minutes. They go in groups of two and they come back and uh, they can have a body break anytime they want. And when they come back, they are normally very much more calm. And it's the same thing upstairs for the grades one and two. They have about six stations. It's wonderful. Uh, we have our wonderful class exterior. So our outdoor classroom is amazing. Thanks to Sylvie Ozel. She's the one that uh, initiated the project that went and got all the grant money that was a what constructed the whole thing with uh, a school last year. And it was wonderful. So uh, we have that going on this year. We also have a makerspace room upstairs. So we turned our old computer lab into a makerspace. Um, the, uh, our science teacher is able to teach in there anytime, well, during her science times, but it's very hands-on. Uh, there are bins, the children are given um, the defi and like they, they just go and build. Today, my defi, I did it in my class though, but we spoke about Inukshuks. I showed them how to build an Inukshuk and they had to go find whatever they wanted in class and just build it. And that's um, how we use our makerspace a lot. Downstairs for kindergarten, we have La Salle de Découverte. It's a green room. Um, we do a lot of uh, filming on the green screen in there because the whole room is green. Um, they also have, it's a salle de découverte for us as well. So we have a lot of fun. It's a, it's a hands-on school, um, a lot of iPads, not a lot of paper, and the children are very, very excited to come every day. So that's our school in a nutshell. So Debbie? Okay, très bien. So here we go. We're gonna go through, um, I won't read everything because you're going to get the, um, the slideshow after, but we did make a, um, a learning package uh, so every child had a learning package that we uh, sent home with them. So we do have a list of a lot of the objects that we put on. I'm just going to show a few. Um, we do our, we have our sound sheet to practice the sounds. We have bingo sheets that they can do um, that the children love. We do a bingo for each theme. Uh, we have alphabet cards. We have the number cards. We have la droite numérique. Um, the children, uh, instead of having a dry erase board, we just laminated a white sheet. Um, there's also a few manipulatives in there, but the list, the list is all there. Um, oh, and I absolutely love, I have the green card and the red card. What I did is I just flipped it over. I mean, it's written, we and no, but I use this all the time. The children, when we did the online learning, we always, always had it. So we can say uh, qui aime le bleu, whatever. So we can do uh, des petits sondages uh, when we're answering questions, especially as a large group. Um, this is very visual. The other thing that I finally made myself this year was uh, the mute button. So we did do a game the first day. Um, 
um, after we, we actually played it. It's silly game for them, the little guys. So I would hide it and then they'd have to either unmute or mute, but just hiding it in your back and bringing it up. They're so funny, you know, you can do it twice and whatever. So that's really good. I also learned the second to last day, and I don't know if you know, um, if you want to unmute yourself, you can just hold down the, um, the space bar. And I didn't know that. So I, I taught at the end, I taught a few of the children how to just push the mute bar if you just want to talk, um, you know, just to, to answer whatever. So that's something that I've learned and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more. Um, so here is the truss uh, with a pretty much like a picture of what we do. Now, the one thing that they don't have to have, but I strongly suggested to the parents, it changed my life, is to have a, um, just a board, uh, um, a, a cookie sheet and magnets. Because if we played bingo, all they did was show me what, they, what it was. It was actually a parent last year who did it. So when they play bingo, I can see they can show it up and, it, and it's great. They do any of the activities, they can use, um, they can use magnets. So that was uh, a big plus uh, for me that uh, was actually a parent last year. And this year, I have to say all my children ended up having it. So it's much easier for them to show rather than bending the screen for me to show if, uh, to see if they pla place the jetons uh, properly or not. So that was uh, really, really helpful. Um, it, you know, the list is exhaustive. It depends what you want to do. Uh, we prepped it until the end of the year. So there are like the grid de dix, the 10, uh, the grid of 10. We have a simple and we have one with two that we can also do, um, <clears throat> that we can also do at the end of the year or depending on the groups because we do large group and small group uh, teaching. Um, yes, um, it's toi qui parle de ça, and, uh, okay, well, that was just in uh, in our tours, right? Like the these are materials that we suggested for the parents to have at home. Uh, so you can read uh, the list there. We don't need to read it, but things that we could use, um, let's say the Play-Doh, then we can do an activity with Play-Doh, uh, making snakes, forming letters, writing their names. Uh, reading them stories. I mean, the parents could read them stories at home. Uh, they could be coloring at home as well. So very easy and simple to uh, look at. And the, the cookie sheet with the magnets is there that Debbie was talking about. Um, I can't read it all, hold on. Uh, so recycling any recycling, item. the recycling is amazing. Last year, I used to have the kids bring recycling to class just so they can create and they created so much. This year, I'm a little sad that they can't bring it to school. Um, but at home, I mean, they could be building in nookshooks with their recycling boxes, with their tin cans, whatever. So it's really, really fun to have these items at home. Okay. Puis le CISA, a Zoom CISA. Uh, so at school, we use the platform Zoom to do our online teaching. Uh, it's fun because you can, we, the first thing we did was to ask the parents to change the name, their name into their, the picture whenever they showed up. If we didn't see the name of the child, we would not allow them in because we don't know who iPad 54 was kind of thing. So uh, it allowed us to see who was coming in and who we would allow in. Um, with uh, Zoom, we also use in-class um, Seesaw Family. So Seesaw Family is great for the parents to see what we're doing in class, where the kids are at. Uh, they get it right away on their phone if um, they allow the notifications and they know what they, they can work on with their, their child. We also use Seesaw Classroom. Um, Seesaw Classroom allows the child to be able to use Seesaw like they would at school. So it's the same thing they can work on. We put activities in there for them to work in and uh, they can work on them at home by themselves with their parents. So let's say they're having trouble with uh, their alphabet. We can find, create, uh, there's also a great library in there. So uh, we can just go and edit and translate if we need to. 
Um, so the kids can work by themselves at home and then they send it to us instead of sending it to their parents. And it's great. I mean, some parents really uh, worked in CISA, others decided not to do it, but it was up to them. It was wonderful. Uh, we also use boom cards. So Debbie, if you want to what, speak about the boom cards. Yeah, boom cards though, you do have to buy, you have to purchase the, uh, the app it was free in spring, and that's how uh, I learned about it. Um, and it's um, it's wonderful. Are... No, it's wonderful. I love it. It is cards. wonderful, uh, but you have to pay for it. You have to pay for the activities as well. But I use it as reinvestment. So we do an activity, let's say on rhymes, and then I had an activity on rhymes. And what's great about it is you can see which cards so maybe rhymes there's maybe 20 activities all that that are repetitive on rhyming you can see which one they did uh, how long it took them to do it which ones they did wrong which ones they didn't uh, and how many times they did it so um it, it was great it's a great tool i think during the online learning and they they can work on it independently and they um, can work on it as often as they want as well right. Whereas CISA, the minute they did an activity, once it's sent to us, they can't redo it unless we send it back to them. Um, so boom, they can work on it as often as they wanted to. And we can actually see, like Debbie said, all their mistakes. So if they if they tried the same card 10 times and they always made the same mistake, then it allowed us to know, okay, I need to work this on, in class. Yeah. So that was great. Yeah, no, it's great. And how long it takes them to do each card. So how much thinking is going on, which is absolutely wonderful. So these are pretty much the applications that we use um, during the online learning. And of course, we practice it in class so they knew what to do once they were home. Our teachers' favorite tools, well, I already showed you my, um, my mute. Um, love, love, love the IPVO or any camera. Um, I often put, I put my stories under there. I actually write uh, on my whiteboard. Uh, we can use manipulatives. Uh, it's great, great, great for that. And I had an IPVO that was also a scanner. So I was able to scan my picture. Um, not my picture, but my stories. And um, the children had the story online. So that was wonderful. Yes, very lucky. I have an old one. <laughs> but so here are a lot of the learning activities. I, I think that, uh, I mean, we're not going to read them all, but uh, you can look at it. And if you have questions after, um, if you if you have questions, whatever, about any of the activities, again, the lists can be endless and there's lists everywhere on um, <clears throat> On the uh, on the web, and we'll, we'll tell you which ones are our favorite uh, activities. Uh, oh, let's see. Oh, that Annie, was the mine. That was my favorite activity. Uh, the first time we went uh, in lockdown in the spring, um, I ended up cooking with my students a lot because we had to see them in like I don't know half hour groups every day, and that was it. And then on Fridays, I would cook with them. And what I learned from that, uh, I mean, you're doing math, you're doing, uh, they're listening, they're following instructions, they're doing science, they're creating something, and then they get to eat it. It's not just bought from a box, which a lot of parents do nowadays, it just comes from a box. Um, a big hit and an easy recipes to start with are mug cakes because it doesn't take a lot of ingredients and they get to cook it and eat it right away. And we would cook it and I would read them a story while they were eating it. So that, I mean, it was wonderful. I also baked pizza dough with them and they were able to take pictures of their pizzas and send them through Seesaw. We made the three to one cookies at Christmas, which is a shortbread cookie. I asked the students what they wanted to bake and I got carrot cake, chocolate muffins, a strawberry shortcake in June. Um, and then the wonderful part is all the pictures I received with the kids, like the kids with their, their cakes and everything. Um, I would just bake with them and then uh, I'd give them ideas to decorate, to put the icing, to put uh, whipped cream or whatever. And it's amazing how creative they were. They absolutely loved it. Um, 
what I learned was uh, send the recipe with the ingredients and everything one week ahead of time. That way the parents know what to buy and they know, oh, I wanna show up for this pizza dough recipe or really I don't. So um, that was a trial and error for the pizza dough. It was a lot of fun, but a lot of dough didn't rise. So we spoke about why with the, the la levure and everything. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but yes, send your recipe ahead of time. Um, I actually had to often take my I should have had the IPVO there, but I didn't really want IPVO in my kitchen in case I made a, a boo-boo and there was food everywhere. So I often took the, the iPad and went like this uh, to show them what it would look like. Um, so we had a lot of fun, the kids loved it. That was my best thing. And I cooked again now, like after Christmas, we baked every week. Yeah. My kids chose uh, to make chocolate cake for their dads for Father's Day. So that was the Father's Day gift was to make a cake for them. So that was a lot of fun. And then they also got to, to um, decorate the way they wanted. Um, now also what we did, um, as Annie was saying, we have to prep the parents. Actually, I'm gonna go back here. I don't want stuff. Um, on the online learning, the parents really appreciate when I tell them the night before what they need, um, what they need to set out for, for that day. I had many parents uh, let me know about that. Uh, last year, we did uh, choice boards, the six kindergarten classes, we picked all this stuff and every week we did a choice board and there's a link to everything, a link to the books, to activities and everything. It's very time consuming to make. Um, the kid, very, especially for Debbie, but the kids just had to click on a picture and there was yeah. a link to so every single picture there that everyone. you see, there's a link to it, to the activity. Yeah. And this year, what I did to make it easier for myself. Um, each page here that you see is on Seesaw. So if you have Seesaw, um, as of last summer, uh, they, we can now include links, uh, many links. Uh, it's second language, and don't look at me there, but I videotaped exactly what the children had to do um, so that if the parents weren't there, they knew what to do. I was trying to think of activities that they didn't need their parents as much, and it was choices. Uh, if there was a seesaw um, um, clip art on it, that meant that I wanted to see it from seesaw. If there was a star, that means they had to do it for a certain date. And I always gave uh, different choices like, um, oh, oh, sorry. I was just trying to move. Like for the Badam Danaj, I gave them choices of what they could do and then they shared it to, between themselves. It was a lot of fun. The, the shapes going either outside to make the shapes or inside, and then I had some children who did use different uh, mediums for all of them, which was a lot, a lot of fun. So I always tried to give them choice, even for the um, the videos. It was either go outside, which I was hoping they would go outside, or move in the classroom. Uh, we also ended up talking because we had recess also in our schedule, and I specifically encouraged the children to go outside to move, and then one day. One, of, one little boy was saying, no, I, I, I did um, a game on, on a tablet, but he was very agitated. And this is a child who shouldn't be. So he learned and he told me himself, I think I better go outside or play. So that was really, really nice. So there's other people also do also use uh, Book Creator to do their, their choice boards. But on, on Seesaw, each board might, might have taken me five, five, 10 minutes. So it's really quick. And I would either add a page or add uh, like um, for the the videos, I would I would add one every day. And then we ended up with three or, or whatever, change out the pages. And I found that the children participated a lot more on these because I think it was less overwhelming. Um, so, OK, uh, so uh, since I'm talking, I'll just finish my coup de cœur that I loved about uh, online or doing challenges. I love giving children challenges. Um, snack time. We did, sometimes we did picnics or whatever. And that was a time when we could talk and we'd show our dogs and I'd show the tricks from my dogs. And then they had their dogs, they had their dinosaurs. It was just so nice and relaxed. We'd be eating and talking as if we were in the classroom. The Cherche et Trouve is, is a hit with the children. Um, stories. I love stories. Um, and we always ask after it. it's one of the activities, you know, who are they, qui sont les personnages, whatever. 
Um, but I did bedtime stories last year, which was a lot of fun. And Fun Friday Freeze Dance, the children love that. And we invite the parents to come and dance with us and the family and everybody starts dancing. So that, that's my coup de cas. Okay, so I won't, uh, my coup cars are there. I won't read them because um, they're just there and we have a lot to go over uh, for our outdoor classroom and there's not a lot of time left. Um, the only one that I didn't explain is the cereal box. So um, I had the children take cereal boxes, macaroni boxes, whatever, and find letters on them. If we were working on letter A that week, it's like, okay, go color letter A on your cereal box. Uh, they had fun with that. Um, they had a lot of fun with it. So, but the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So we'll just move on to, I think our outdoor classroom. Wait. We're, we are going to run out of time. Yeah. So our outdoor classroom is pretty much uh, all picture-based. We also try to include a lot of winter activities um, because a lot of teachers were saying, well, what do you do in the winter? We do a lot. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to do and I've got a lot more ideas. We both have a lot of ideas to go through. Ideas to go through. Uh, once again, I just want to thank um, is Silvio Zell for thinking of all this. Uh, yes, we do have a beautiful yard. Yes, we do have a beautiful forest. But all the activities, I'm sure we can find other ways. If you just have a gate, you could tack on the pictures on the gate or use cones to hide things or or whatever. I think, um, you know, we can always figure out um, different things and adapt, uh, adapt almost anything. So, oh, I'll start. Uh, so starting off this school year, well, I was very nervous with COVID. So I decided I'm going to spend as much time outside as I can. Um, we are sharing, we have two recesses morning, two recesses uh, in the afternoon. So we don't have as much time. But uh, my morning uh, routine was done outside. I still do it from time to time outside. I still read stories, even if it's the winter. So I always did my story time. If you have, um, for the little guys, I always, at the beginning, I sat around the, um, the carré de sable, the um, sandbox. Sand and it, it would, it said, délimité, it limited, it, wrong word, but it, it gave a place for the children to sit and know where to go. And yes, at the beginning, they're going to start digging in the sand and this and that. But they do learn. If you, if you keep on going, they'll, they'll learn not, to, you know, they can hold a branch in their, in their hand or whatever. So I did story time. We did songs. As you can see on the bottom, we're outside of the sandbox. We practice inside, outside. Um, we have our little yoga area. Um, another game, I do chalk on, on the, on the uh, I did it on the wood. And it was uh, à, la, à la casu, so they say the words. Um, and then, like, if it's cercle, triangle, carré, um, and then the next person says à la casu, then the following person sits. So these are, are different morning routines that we did. Uh, when, when you're outside, though, you have to expect that there's going to be times where things happen, you know, we, we learn a lot, uh, or sometimes the children are distracted, you can see there's a street behind, this is our front yard, and yes, when the, um, when the recycling bin comes, well, we have recycling bin <laughs> stories, and what and they have to stop, never. it's not worth trying to get their attention, we just change the subject, um, here's, um, oh, this is the game, Alakazu, here, uh, this, uh, we just got a nice gazebo that's new. Um, I think it was done in October, November. So now we go in there too. We're very lucky to have that, um, which is great. Um, this again is an activity. There were blackbirds and I had a picture of the children all looking up. It was beautiful, but I couldn't hide all their faces. It was the most beautiful thing. There were, we had stories about what was going up in the trees, but we couldn't see any of the birds. There's absolutely, absolutely couldn't find them. And so we had lots of stories about what the, where the birds were and why, why we couldn't hear them. And, but um, again, this is an activity absolutely not planned. It just happened. And we had the most beautiful discussion. Also just to go sit uh, in the forest I often take my students to just go sit out and uh, to just listen, listen to, I mean, I used to do it when I was a kid, but it doesn't seem like 
Uh, we're doing that anymore. We're not teaching, the parents aren't teaching their children to just sit and listen to all the noises or to just lie down and look at the clouds and what kind of shapes can you see? So I often do that as well. And then uh, the kids can express themselves. Oh, I saw a dragon. I saw this, I saw that, or the noises. Okay, what noise did you hear? So I heard a door slam. Like I have maybe a 30 seconds or a minute where everybody's quiet and then we share and then it really calms them down when they're very mm -hmm. excited and then we're able to go in. Yeah. So that's good. Go ahead, Debbie. Wait, no, I was just there with the clouds. I use uh, Eric Carl, the, mm -hmm. the nuage. I guess it's the cloud in English. Oh, that's why I'm Uh, we At the beginning of the year, we have fun uh, going outside to write their names. So uh, we write their names with chalk on the pavement, and then the kids have to go find whatever object they can in the forest. Uh, most of the time, it's uh, pine cones, and they write their names. This year, I actually tried without writing their names, but with just having their name tag, and they had to try to write their name, and they managed. It was really cool. And uh, some wrote them really small, some wrote them really big, some broke twigs. It was really, really neat. So that's the name. Is there another yeah. one? Well, I just put the little tic-tac-toe oh, there. As they finished tic-tac-toe, take a chalk, take objects, and they can just play. That's uh, yeah. quick when they finish, keep them busy. So this is a pattern. Uh, both Debbie and I went outside to make patterns. Um, after speaking about patterns for a few days, we went and did that. And then you really see if the kids understand or not. And there's so much stuff they can use in the forest outside. It's incredible. One thing though, adapt again. <laughs> if you go outside on a windy day and you have leaves, forget it, they all blow away. Yep. <laughs> uh, one year I did art outside. It was a collaborative project where uh, we tried to make a big, huge, gigantic apple. So we took uh, wood sticks and placed them all in like an apple kind of shape. And it was huge, our thing. And then they had to uh, find leaves. It was in the, in the fall. So they had to find colored leaves to make our apple. And of course the wind came and just blew everything away. So it's like, okay, well, let's do something else. So I mean, you always have to be prepared for plan B and C when you're outside in the forest, but the kids love it. Um, I, yep, that's it. Yeah, this again is, uh, we were tr practicing à l'intérieur and à l'extérieur, so inside and out. So at first I was telling put inside, out, and also with themselves, but dans le cercle, à l'extérieur, à l'intérieur, extérieur. And then finally, I just decided to go, oh, well, on va mettre deux cocottes à l'intérieur, trois à l'extérieur. And so they had to work together and, and they did very, very well. And they they enjoyed it. Sometimes it's the most simple, simple things that uh, the children they enjoy. Get, they get to do math without knowing it as well, without mm -hmm. realizing they're like deux cocottes. They actually have to count the two, the deux cocottes. And then if you have three on the outside, well, two plus three makes how many? And then they get to count it without really realizing yeah. they're doing math yeah and then also they had to hide i did another game where we had the 10 and then they had to hide them and then they had to say the other one had to say well how many how many the other child had hidden so um, there's so many so many games that uh, and they mm -hmm. just pop up in our heads sometimes too you do one activity you read a book and you get an idea um what's doing pardon oh, me Okay, it's correct. So I found another activity. We had the boards. We were practicing uh, writing our, our numbers. So I'd have them write the number, and then I actually asked them to put um, uh, objects, the, the right number of objects on it. And you could see they're all sitting and, and doing it. And they enjoy, they enjoy being outside. They ask me every morning, are we going outside? And then, quelle activité? You could yeah. do the same thing with letters, practice writing the letters, and then with uh, your objects, they can just practice making, which would be a little harder, but still fun. You do a mm -hmm. few letters. And they can do it in the sand too, in the sandbox or in mm -hmm. the snow. Okay. Uh, so, oh. Brindé, do you want me to talk about Brindé? Well, it's good, fine. So Brindé is an activity that Debbie came up with uh, last year, and it's wonderful. So we read the book Brindé, and Brindé is just a little branch uh, that goes to school and nobody sees her because she's camouflaged all the time. And um, after reading the book, we 
explain the activity and the kids have to go outside and create something. So here, so you can't see, you see our sig in the right hand corner. So a child created a tiger and hid Brainzy. So we have these sticks that we painted with the top red um, and they have to hide Brainzy in there. And I think we have a shark as well on the left mm -hmm. on the right hand corner and we have a tree so if you look in there i mean the kids have to get really creative it's art um, and they have to hide their stick mm -hmm. so it's a lot of fun we even have a, a licorne oui. so that's cool. <laughs> total licorne. the kids love that activity yes now i learned from last year not to do pick up the branches and do the activity the same day uh, it was too much for my children. It would depend on the group. Uh, I found that they were they spent a lot more time creating because picking up the branches are running everywhere. They're excited. And so um, this year I, we did the branches one day, as you can see in the picture, and then we did the, um, the drawings the next day. And uh, yeah, they, they really, really enjoyed it. Um, this is a simple activity I saw on Pinterest or somewhere uh, where the children just had to, it's a motor skill and they have to actually follow the lines and work together. And you know what? It, it's not that easy. They really have to work together. So la collaboration, collaboration. So um, outside, I also took my students reading. So I took uh, after lunch recess it's our quiet time and instead of doing it inside it was a gorgeous fall day um after we had received a lot of rain so i took the bin of books outside and the kids were able to just lie down on any platform or sit we have our outdoor classroom is wonderful so they enjoyed reading the smells that they could smell the listening to the trees and the birds it was amazing and then on the right hand side, I have math fun with egg cartons. So in the egg carton, I wrote numbers one to 10. And then so the kids had to put one something in the, in the hole that had one and then two in the twos. And it got really complicated when they got higher than five. So I learned from last year that leaves don't work because they just stuff them in and then you have no clue how many leaves are in there or if they even understood. So this year I taught them to take branches and just break little pieces and they were able to uh, place them in. And you can see, I mean, who's understanding, who knows their numbers and they're having fun because it's a scavenger hunt for them and they're doing math, so it's wonderful. And you know who's in the left field and who understands right away so that was a great activity and I, I do it year after year and everybody keeps to coming to borrow my egg cartons. So that's fun. Okay, I do the same activity, but I have it on a, um, on a, a plateau, on a, a platter. Um, so they, it's the same thing, it has the numbers. The only thing is that they have to realize that if they wanna put something big, you have to do it with the lower numbers. And then as the numbers get higher, well, you can't put the pine cones. You can't put 10 pine cones. I have to be able to count them easily. So that's what I told them. If I can count them easily, we're all good. This was an activity a bit like Brindy after speaking about forest animals and drawing forest animals and doing a lot of art with forest animals. We went outside and I had pictures of forest animals and um, the children had to create a forest animal. So that was wonderful. They had so much fun. Some worked alone, some worked together. Uh, avait la collaboration, la créativité. So we were working on two C's right there. It was gorgeous outside. So instead of doing art inside, we did art outside and the children are okay with it. At the beginning, I had trouble going, oh, but they can't take it home and it's so cute. But then you take a picture and you send it home and you, you destroy it after and it's okay. It's all good. Well, everything well, everything goes into Seesaw. So it goes into the children's Seesaw uh, journal. So yeah, they're, they've learned though, they, they understand. Um, I like to use books. I'm often inspired by books. 
So here's the besoin d'un câlin. So it was porcupine again during the animals. So they had to draw it. So I told them it has to have a body, four legs, a little tail, a head, and then go on and do what you, what you need to do. I want to see a, por a, a, a porcupine, a porcupine. So very easy. Um, the kitchen, we've got a nice kitchen they can play in. It's great. They love that. Winter, we're finally at winter. It's so, oh, you want to talk about it? Okay. Uh, so in the winter, Debbie and I go snowshoeing a lot. Um, the, uh, the best part is to teach them about snowshoes. And you see the three different types of snowshoes on top. So I have my mom's old babish snowshoes that I brought to school to show them the, the size and why they were so big and how you just float on the snow compared to today. And then you have the medium snowshoes that are the teachers and then the small ones that are the kids. So how we start off snowshoeing is by taking, giving the students snowshoes inside and we sit, I sit in a circle at least, and then I show them how to tie them and they have to practice putting their own snowshoes on and off in the school. Um, and we practice that a day or two before we take them out. And once they're really good at it, because it's dexterity, it's hard and the snowshoes are really hard to like take apart and put back together. So. And on top of that, they have mitts uh, to do it. And they have to practice with their boots and their mitts in the school, which is really fun and funny. They think it's hilarious. And then when we go outside snowshoeing, they can actually, most of them can do it by themselves. And then if they do it by themselves, they get to be a helper and help another friend. So you have la collaboration, working as a community together. It's wonderful. And then we play little games, snowshoeing, um, we run, we go in the forest. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yes, and, and yes, we did it by ourselves. No parent help. <laughs> no aids, no parents. And they're good. They can actually do it. Um, that, uh, here is it's another game that, that we did because, uh, you know, we walk around a lot. Uh, we play games, but then... We wanted to find other activities. So if you can see here, we've got a little mall show. We, we put zip ties around the trees so that we can hang different, um, different pictures at different times of the year and play different games. We practiced again with the cookie sheet and we were trying to figure out because we can't use markers, we can't use a, a board. How are they going to, how are we gonna know which ones they found? So I actually, there you go. I think I have a picture of it after. Oh, I might have not put it in. But they have to go find. So each group has different animals to find. And there's magnets. We practice with the magnets. So the best magnets are the ones that I put here, the flexible magnets. I found them at Michael's, not the ones in the dollar store. They fall. These ones are really good. They hold. We even practice with mittens. So all they have to do is slide it with their mittens. So, so the best part is, is to practice in class first and then they know what to do yeah. and then you take them outside and you just slide. We tried it, with uh, clothespins and the clothespins broke um, with yeah, a, a clipboard and clothespins. We'd lose the clipboard. Anyways, that wasn't good. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's we, the best. Yeah. And I did, uh, it, it's cricket. I did put the numbers cricketed and um, there's different colors. So I have number one to 24 red, one to 24 blue, one to 24, so that I can use for a whole bunch of different um, different activities. So if you don't have cricket, you'll have to find another idea, but the cricket works wonderfully. Um, or find somebody who does cricket, but uh, uh, it, it lasts, like we didn't lose any magnets, none of the numbers came off. So it's great, great, great. Um, so the children love this activity. Um, Again, in the winter, snowflakes. So as Annie was saying at the beginning, sometimes we go out and it's not a great idea to have the, the wind or whatever, but for snowflakes, you keep your kit ready. So when you see snowflakes, you go out that day because you never know when you're gonna have the perfect snowflakes uh, to really observe. So it was a mild day, we went out, they drew what they thought was a, a snowflake. Then we went and we caught snowflakes. I have a little black cloth and the little magnets that they love. They don't really need the magnets, but they love the little magnets. And, uh, and then they drew um, 
the the um then they do the um they chuck on the um the snowflakes okay. so it always starts off with a book well not always but often i get uh, inspired by a book so we did a whole theme on on uh, on snowflakes and then the classroom we did them with legos and blocks and uh we grew them and we actually made the snowflakes so um that they really enjoyed and they asked me when if there's snowflakes they want to go out at recess with them again so Inukshuks. so the Inukshuks, you know, um every year we normally ask the parents to freeze a lot of colored ice and the kids bring the blocks to school and we get to build inukshuks. Uh, so you have to go, I mean, last year or two years ago, the, I think it was last year, it just wouldn't freeze. It was too hot outside. So we never really got ice cubes. We got mush. Um, and then you have to be really careful. It has to be really cold outside to go or else the kids get stained from all the food coloring. Um, but I mean, they create beautiful structures, the inukshuks, you get to talk about it. You get to read the book, watch, stories about it today i actually did not feel like since we can't bring anything the kids can't bring anything from home right now we couldn't have uh the parents bring in um, ice cubes debbie went ahead and did it all by herself <laughs> throws all these ice cubes you see and i was like no i'm not doing that but i still want to do inukshuks so today we spoke about inukshuks and i showed them how to build inukshuks and in class their steam activity was like okay guys you need to build an inukshuk like I just drew and explained that everything has to be um, leveled and you have to like squeeze different blocks in whatever so it doesn't fall. And I say you can use whatever you want in class, go build me an Anukshuk. And then you can see who doesn't understand and they have chairs like all lined up along the class as a snake. And then you saw, I saw castles. I'm like, wow, beautiful castle. Where's your Anukshuk? Like build me an Anukshuk. So that's a wonderful thing to do inside outside um yep yeah. that's it yeah. and every year is different too when you're making them because sometimes you have nice sticky snow so it sticks well sometimes you don't have it's snow difficult. so they have to figure out what they're going to do as well okay it's always that i keep telling me faut trouver des solutions solutions so I think this was Friday. I was absolutely burnt and it was beautiful outside and we had nice fluffy snow and I gave them the uh, defi to make a mountain bigger than me and I gave them the shovels and off they went and they shoveled the whole yard having fun. It was like, ah, it's built a mountain bigger than Madame Annie. So they thought it was cool. And um they just build a huge mountain. It wasn't as big as me, but then the mountain was built and I was like, okay, let's make a castle with it. So we made a fort. Um, they all worked together. We got the pots and pans from the kitchen after that. They were able to, the snow was a bit sticky, fluffy, but sticky, it was weird snow. Anyways, they managed to make that. Uh, mm -hmm. We went outside maybe half an hour before recess. It was absolutely gorgeous. And then they had recess to work on it. And when I came back to get them after recess, they were like, look at this, Madame Annie. So they were so proud. They worked together. They had fun. Uh, they spent energy. They created. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Oh, okay. So this activity is, I'm going to do it this week. We never made it outside yet. But I decided I wanted to share it with you. It's the mitten or la mouf. I did it in French. Um, and the children, of course, you know, they compare the stories. The animals aren't the same or whatever. But my activity outside is I cut, uh, cut out um, in black uh, material uh, mittens. So I've got five groups. So five mittens out. And they're going to go find the animals from uh, la mouf, the one with the frog there. Uh, that's the, their preferred book. So, uh, but they have to go find them. They're working together, la collaboration. They have to place them in order and then they have to tell me what they are together. So um, again, something, you know, something just simple and just go do it outside. So I, I'm going to hide the, the little animals. So yes, I'm going to have five of each so that they can each find and then they have to place them in order. So it's just retelling a story. So instead of doing it in class, we're going to do it outside. So that. And then this one I'm hoping to do next week. 
is, um, I mean, these are just suggestions of books. That's the book I'm going to use. Um, it's a, I, I love it because, uh, you know, it's the one where there's a, um, a, a character that's added every time to, uh, to the story. So it, it's a lot of fun. And they're going to have to build a, a, um, a train uh, in, in a the classroom. A uh, what? A toboggan? A toboggan, yeah. They have to build a toboggan in the class. But I'm going to tell them before it's going to go outside. So I've been saving a lot of plastic containers, cardboard containers, and whatever. And then we're going to go outside and we're going to see which ones slide well, which ones, you know, which ones need to be fixed. We're going to come back. And then we'll also see which one slides further than the others. And they'll be able to build their own um, <clears throat> their own hills uh, to go on. Um, and then, do you want to talk about it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, we just received again. Uh, Sylvie Ozel is the master of finding uh, grants. Um, we have shovels. There's our well. This year, our yard is is uh, by bubble, so the children don't uh, don't mix. So um, there's enough shovels per child. If in a certain area, they're not in every area. Well, the fun that they have with those shovels, but it's important to buy a good one so they don't break. They have so much fun and it, it's really, really, we have a lot less um, disciplining to do. The same thing for the sleds. The sleds, even if you don't have a mountain, they can pull each other. My children had so much fun. They made a train and they were all pulling each other and they were so proud of it that they made me go outside because they did it during recess. And they, they had me go out and see how they were working so nicely together, pulling each other on this in one big line. So it's just, um, so even if you don't have our yard, there's so much that you can do. We can adapt everything and yeah. So I think that that is, oh, no, I forgot. The last one, of course, we have this wonderful yard, but we also have to take care of it if we want to play on it. So I told the children, let's go. We have to shovel all the snow off of uh, the benches, the platforms and everything and that each class was going to take a turn. If we want to have fun outside and do lots of activities, well, we also have to care for it. So that's it. And I'll say something. So I, I hope you got a lot of ideas. Um, you know, just grab a book. Uh, anything can be adapted. Don't be afraid to try. There's lots of flops in there, things that don't yeah. work out as well as we want. But we, we figured it out that yeah. this year will not be that great, but then the following year we, we make it even better. Voilà. C'est ça. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> 